Coming up on this Monday edition of Daybreak, the Copenhagen shooting suspect shot dead by police after a deadly double terror attack on a cafe and a synagogue was on the radar of Danish intelligence. Lawmakers will vote today on whether to confirm Iwan Gu as the country's next prime minister amid various controversies surrounding the nominee. Plus, a tentative ceasefire remains in place in Ukraine, but there have been reports of fighting around a contested town in the east of the country. Daybreak begins now. Hello and thanks for joining us. To our viewers around the world, it's 6am on Monday, February 16th here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom and you're tuned in to Daybreak. And we start with the latest terror attack in Europe. Police in Denmark say the suspected gunman in the Copenhagen shooting was a 22-year-old Danish national that had been known to authorities for a history of violence and weapon possession. The suspect was shot dead in a shootout on Sunday following attacks on a cafe and a synagogue. Son Jung-in starts us off. Denmark's intelligence agency chief says the gunman was on their watch list prior to the attack. It's a person who was known to us, so yes, it was a person on intelligence's radar. Officials have not revealed the man's name, but since he was shot dead, the investigation is focused on the suspect's movements before, during and after the shootings and whether he had traveled to Islamist hotspots. After assessing CCTV footage, police suspect the man acted alone, but they are still trying to see if the suspect received assistance from others. The attacker opened fire at an arts cafe that was hosting a debate on freedom of speech on Saturday afternoon. Among those in attendance was Swedish cartoonist Lars Vilks. Vilks has received death threats since 2007 when his depiction of the Prophet Mohammed as a dog was published. The suspect was shot dead early on Sunday after a second attack at a synagogue. The carnage killed two civilians and injured five police officers. The Danish prime minister says the shooting was a politically motivated terror attack and promised to protect freedom of speech and the Jewish community in the country. The incident brings up memories of the recent terror attack in Paris. The French ambassador to Denmark, who attended Saturday's debate, believes the motivation for the cafe shooting was the same as for the shooting at the French weekly Charlie Hebdo that left 12 people dead. Son Jung-in, Arirang News. Back here in Korea, and the National Assembly is going to vote on the confirmation of Prime Minister nominee Lee Wan Gu on Monday afternoon. The main opposition, New Politics Alliance for Democracy, is demanding the three term lawmaker withdraw from consideration due to a number of allegations swirling around him, from real estate speculation to him and one of his sons dodging mandatory military service. The ruling Senuri party, which holds a majority in parliament, says it will push ahead with the vote after the rival parties agreed last week to hold the vote today. This is the Park administration's third attempt to replace incumbent Prime Minister Jong Hong Won, with the first two nominees withdrawing for uh, various reasons. If he is confirmed, the presidential office is expected to carry out a small reshuffle, including cabinet members and presidential aides as early as Tuesday. Korea has reportedly nominated a new ambassador to China. Various reports and government sources say Kim Jong-su, a former national security advisor and former defense minister, will replace current ambassador Guan yong se The decision is raising some eyebrows in Korea as it comes less than a year after Kim was blasted for making some controversial remarks about the government's responsibility for the Sewolho ferry sinking last April. It also marks the first time that an official with a military background has been tapped for this post since 1992, when Seoul and Beijing established diplomatic uh, ties. 
The 67-year-old served as the National Security Advisor from March 2013 to May 2014 and as Defence Chief from November 2006 to February 2008. North Korean officials swore allegiance to their young leader at a rally on Sunday ahead of the anniversary today of the birthday of the late leader Kim Jong-il. According to the North Korean Central News Agency, Che ryong hae secretary of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party, pledged to safeguard current leader Kim Jong-un on behalf of other high-level officials. Hwang byung so chief of the General Political Bureau of the Korean People's Army, and Che Tebok, who is the uh, chairman of the country's Supreme People's Assembly, were also uh, in attendance for this uh, gathering. The state media outlet reported the young leader, however, was not present at the event. He was visiting a construction site for housing for the nation's scientists. Now, the most senior member of Japan's ruling Liberal Democratic Party has stressed that the issue of Japan's sexual enslavement of Korean women during World War II should be resolved within the lifetime of the victims. Speaking to reporters on Sunday, Toshihiro Nikai said that he and uh, Korean President Park Geun-hye agreed on the need to solve the issue. This during their one-on-one -on -one meeting in Seoul last Friday, which you can see pictures of there. Nikai, who is the top executive in Japan's ruling party, also said Tokyo must face the issue sincerely, adding that he would try to set the right conditions for a summit between President Park and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe. The two leaders have yet to meet one-on-one, -on -one, despite both coming to power a couple of years ago now. There's hope the two sides can improve their frosty relations as 2015 marks the 50th anniversary since Korea and Japan normalized their relations. Now to another gloomy report for the Korean economy and it shows that the majority of Koreans feel the economy is in a depression. This is according to a new poll that also shows people feel like they've been hit hardest by rising consumer prices. Ah Hwang Jie has the details. More than nine out of ten Koreans feel the domestic economy has fell into a state of depression, and almost half of them feel like the slump will go on for at least another year. This is what a new survey released Sunday by the Federation of Korean Industries shows. The poll, conducted by a separate research company, surveyed 800 men and women over the age of 19 late last month. The respondents cited rising prices as the major factor causing economic difficulty. More than 20 percent of them also named a drop in income as something that has had an impact on their daily lives. Household debt, concerns about life after retirement, job security and housing and educational expenses were also cited as a burden. On the inflation rate in particular, more than 80 percent of respondents said they feel like prices have risen faster than the government's announced inflation rate of 1.3 percent for last year. Skepticism about the domestic economy is also expected to dent private spending this year. More than half of those surveyed said they will spend less this year than last year, while a mere 8.5 percent said spending will improve in 2015. Hwang Jie, Arirang News. Korea will cut city gas prices starting next month by 10.1 percent on average, marking the biggest cut ever. The energy ministry says that the move is uh, a way to reflect falling global oil prices. It's the second price cut this year after the government lowered prices for liquefied natural gas by almost 6 percent early last month. The government reviews raw material costs every two months to factor in any change bigger than 3% in the purchase price. Now, the rising number of Chinese tourists to Korea is having a very significant impact on the Korean economy. The Korea Tourism Organization says more than 6.1 million Chinese people uh, visited Korea last year alone. And that's a jump of more than 41% from 2013. The money spent by each tourist from China 
resulted in some $2,700 for Korea. That's a total of 17 billion US dollars. To give you some context, that's the equivalent to the value of almost 700,000 exported cars. The agency also estimates roughly 340,000 jobs have been created. And uh, the traditional Korean rice wine makoli is becoming more and more popular in China. Korea's agriculture ministry says makoli exports to China jumped to more than 250,000 US dollars last year. That's up 187% from the year before. The increase is attributed to a decline in the consumption of hard liquor in China and the perception that makoli is a healthy uh, alcoholic drink. But while the overall volume of exports to China increased by 5% uh, last year, exports of the rice wine to Japan decreased due to the weaker Japanese yen. Korea's population is aging very fast and while it's a problem that poses a serious challenge to the government and healthcare services, the growing number of senior citizens offers a range of industries the opportunity to target the booming and very lucrative market. For this week's Industry Insight, here's our Connie Kim. Come 2026, about a quarter of the nation's total population will be 65 or older. Now zeroing in on this lucrative market, Korea's medical machinery industry is targeting the silver generation. The domestic medical device industry has been growing about 5% annually over the past six years, topping 4.2 billion U.S. dollars in 2013. And it'll only increase as demand rises with the changing senior demographic. But it's not a surge in cutting-edge operating room hardware that's leading the way. Looking at the most recent data, the top manufactured devices were dental implants devices and dental alloys used in fillings. About 9 out of 10 seniors in Korea are implant recipients. The country's leading dental x-ray manufacturer, Vatek, is just one of the many companies that see the potential for this market and is aiming to cash in. It's important to use accurate dental x-rays, especially for seniors, considering that implant surgery comes with high risk. We expect a surge in demand for our x-ray machines. And another fact, one in five seniors are known to be suffering from diabetes. Green Cross MS, a company that specializes in diagnostic tools, recently acquired a blood glucose monitor maker. The company says it's a landmark deal that'll help it focus more on developing technology for the elderly. This will help us access the ubiquitous healthcare market. We are currently doing research on how a smartphone could be used to track heart rates, cholesterol, and hemoglobin levels. Medical devices are evolving, going smart and high tech. Analysts forecast the industry will continue to head towards helping older generations. Medical machines have gotten smaller, small enough for elders to carry around. If the technology to send data from these medical machines to hospitals are developed, a new ubiquitous healthcare industry will open up. Korea's changing demographics are affecting how the local market will expand. In the past, medical advancements and devices squarely focused on curing people and saving lives. But now, the landscape of the industry is shifting towards helping people live healthier and longer. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Time now for a look through the global headlines we're following on this Monday morning. For that, we turn to Eunice Kim, standing by at the uh, News Center for us. Good morning, Eunice. Happy Monday to you, Mark. A ceasefire is mostly still holding in eastern Ukraine. The truce kicked in early Sunday, as agreed by the leaders of Ukraine, Russia, Germany, and France days before. Correspondents on the ground said they had heard a noticeable de-escalation of shelling and artillery. The AFP citing a military 
spokesman reports Ukrainian troops did come under fire some 60 times in the early hours of the ceasefire. The point of concern remains to be the strategic transport hub of Debaltsevev, an area that pro-Russia separatists argued was theirs and exempt from the truce. Some 8,000 Ukrainian soldiers are encircled there and their fate remains unclear. Kiev's presidential office said the leaders of the four-way peace summit engaged in a conference call on Sunday in which they agreed the truce extends to that besieged town. Analysts say the first 48 hours will be critical in the fate of the Ukraine ceasefire. The United Nations Security Council has convened an emergency meeting to try to keep Yemen from a spiraling co collapse. They are considering a draft resolution that demands the Houthi rebels to immediately and unconditionally withdraw from government and release Yemen's president and his cabinet members from house arrest. The Houthis had dissolved parliament and set up their own ruling body after seizing power back in January. Meanwhile, tens of thousands of Yemeni has continued their protest against the rebel movement over the weekend. Four people were killed when gunmen opened fire, and clashes between the Shia rebels and Sunni tribesmen also left 26 people dead. Eurozone finance ministers will meet in Brussels later on this Monday to consider the future of Greece's bailout program. And ahead of it, thousands poured into the streets of Athens in anti-austerity protests. Police said the rally outside of the Parliament House drew some 20,000 people. Crowds held up banners reading, Stop Austerity, Support Greece, Change Europe, as they demonstrated against austerity policies set by outside creditors that they said were impoverishing the people. Protests spread at two other countries, other cities in Greece, and also to other cities in Europe at large. In Paris, some 2,000 people showed solidarity against what they called the Goliath of finance as they marched through the city center. Now, we are just a couple of days away from the Lunar New Year holiday, or Solal, as it's known here in Korea. And uh, it's every family's nightmare, really, uh, spending more time in traffic than with their relatives in uh, various parts of the country. In a bid to ease travel times, the Transport Ministry and Navigation System company iNavi uh, teamed up to analyse Solal exodus routes from the past two years. They concluded that the four most congested routes are as follows. The Maesong interchange to the So Pyeongtaek IC, the Yangjae IC to the uh, Ansong IC, the Yongin IC to the Hobop IC, and from Hanam to the Ochang Expressway. Taking a detour through national roads or highways could save holiday travellers up to 46 precious minutes of driving. Uh, so uh, they suggest you do some research and plan your travel route before you hit the road. And staying on the Lunar New Year theme, a common gift that is shared and eaten during the holiday is uh, hangwa, or traditional rice uh, confectionery. Once a holiday favourite, the treats have become less popular in recent years, so makers of this product are trying to give them a more uh, mouth-watering appeal. Paulie reports. These small doughy pieces of glutinous rice turn into feathery cakes, crispy on the outside and soft on the inside when dunked in boiling oil. After they're coated with chochung or rice syrup and sprinkled with rice topping, they become delicious yugua. They may look like ordinary traditional Korean confectionery, but they actually have a very unique flavor of jujube and hot pepper that is known to blend well with rice. The fermented hot pepper, yugua, that we make is one of our best-selling items because of its unique spicy taste, which is different from the traditional sweet taste. The idea for this special recipe was provided by a local agricultural research service. And fresh agricultural products for the ingredients are locally grown and added bonus for some. 
As we have gotten positive reviews for our newly developed hankwa with hot pepper, grape, and jujube flavors, we're planning to diversify and expand our product lineup. As the Lunar New Year holiday nears, hankwa makers are busy trying to promote the unique taste of their products while preserving their traditional qualities. Paul Yi, Arirang News. And a good Monday morning to you all as we kick things off with the 2015 Four Continents Figure Skating Championships, where despite high expectations, Yana's kids are far from being the next figure queen just yet. Now, with the latest single free skating program taking place on Sunday, the 18-year-old Park so struggled a bit on the jumps as she scored a 110.28 points for a combined 163.75, good for ninth place overall. Meanwhile, Kim Hye Jin would finish off with a combined score of 147.80 points overall for a 11th place finish as the two teenagers finished the event with a rather disappointing result. Now, meanwhile, the top podium spot will go to U.S. figure skater Polina Edmonds, who finished first with 186.82 points overall, with Satoko Miyahara and Rika Hongo of Japan finishing second and third, respectively. Now, more disappointment on ice, this time over in the ISU Single Distances Speed Skating Championship, where Yi Sang Hwan went after her third straight gold medal in the 500-meter event. But it seemed like her knee issue continues to be a problem for the two-time Olympic gold medalist as she would finish with a combined time of 76.004 seconds after two races and would finish fifth overall. Now, the fifth place finish is her first non-medal finish in the event in seven years. Now, with her knee problem more and more apparent now, her coaching staff might opt into shutting her down for the season and go for the surgery if her condition worsens. Now, Yi sang Hwa might have fallen short in getting her third straight gold medal during the single distances speed skating championship over the weekend, but sensational Son Neung Min found the net three times over the weekend as he nears a record set by the legendary Cha Bam Gun. With the 23-year-old scoring his 12th, 13th and 14th goal of the season in Bayer Leverkusen's 5-4 loss against Wolfsburg this past weekend, not only did he break his personal single-season goal record, but is on the brink of breaking the Bundesliga single-season goal record for a Korean player. Now, with the legendary Cha Bam Gun scoring 19 goals during the 1985-1986 season, Son Heung-min is just five goals away from the record as he continues his hot streak over in Germany. Now, a legend in the sporting world can be born in many different ways, and one of the ways is basically winning more than anyone else, which is why Ursad Mobis Phoebus head coach Yu Jae Hak is already being called a legend despite still being active. With head coach Yu and his Ursan Mobis Phoebus facing off against the Seoul SK Knights on Sunday, Mobis will win the game 70 to 60, giving him his 500th victory of his career. The 52 year old who made his coaching debut back in 1998 is the first. KBL coached to reach 500 wins and is currently leading the KBL with the most games coached with 884. Now with a combined record of 500 wins and 384 losses, he's also second in the KBL for winning percentage behind KT's Chen Changjin. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. Good morning. Uh, we had mid-March-like temperatures yesterday under dusty skies. Well, we have rain falling, which washed away all the dust in the air. So entire nation have been receiving showers from last night, and it, it will continue throughout the day, except for Jeju Island. Uh, we can expect to have 5 to 40 millimeters of rainfall, and that rain could turn into snow for the Gangwon-do provinces during the day. And it's a a wet road out there, so drive extra carefully on the way to work this morning. Now, the temperatures, though, they didn't drop that much overnight. The lows are kicking off near 5 degrees here in Seoul, but the highs will not be as mild as yesterday. It will be 3 to 4 degrees lower today, as the daytime high here in Seoul will peak at 6, while the top temperatures in Daegu and Gwangju will rise to 7 and 11, and Busan will top out at 9 this afternoon. And as
As for the other regions, Jeju Island and Daejeon Shu see a high of 13 and 8 respectively, and Dokdo picks at 6. That's all for Korea, and here's international weather for viewers around the world. Well, that is going to do it for now. Korea Today is coming up at the top of the hour, 7 a.m. Korea time. Have a great day. Stay tuned to Arirang TV. Goodbye.